All right. Here we go, guys. Three, two. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I'm ready. Okay. All right. Wait, we all we all ready now? We all ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. Cool. All right. Here we go. Three, two, one, play. Live from the Queen City, Buffalo, New York at ComPro Field, we've got an Eastern Conference showdown between the hometown Queen City Corsairs and the visiting St. Louis Gladiators. Welcome inside the broadcast booth, everybody. Play-by-play -play commentator Eric Vincent alongside Mark Lopez, and we've got Harish Prasad on stats tonight. Mark, what do we expect from this ballgame coming up here, partner? Well, this is indeed a very interesting game, and, you know, you have the second rushing team QCC, and you have the fourth passing team in St. Louis. So who's going to come on top? That's going to be the answer that we're going to be answering today. So we get a look at the stars to look at here. Coming up, we're going to get the coin toss here at midfield. And we'll see what to expect here. Should be easy to point out who is who. St. Louis going with the all-whites today. Queen City in their typical all black with the lime green trim. So Gladiators are gonna take the ball first. They will start off and Queen City will defend the South goal to start things off. Mark, it's good to have you alongside me once again, man. And I'm ready yeah, for a I'm great not. game. Yeah, I'm ready too. And you know, it's been the past two weeks I was not with you, but I'm ready to call another great game. And this should be a good one. Ricky Matthews got the ball on the tee and is in the air. And here we go. We're underway here in Buffalo. Field it at about the 10-yard line. St. Louis will bring it right up the field. Following his blockers, had some room on the left-hand side, brought down. And that is where St. Louis will take over to start things off. Yeah, decent uh, return right there. Picking up five extra yards. He would have been tackled to 30 picking up five more it's good stuff Juan Moore getting things started for the gladiators 
Dylan Asil at quarterback. Denzel Diaz in the backfield for the Gladiators. First and ten. Asil to throw. Got a man wide open but dropped over on the corner over there. Intended for one of the tight ends. That was a close one. And um, Asil, by the way, uh, he has already 3,600 career yards. So, you know, he's looking to be playing a strong passing game this game as he has always been this season. So a second and 10 from the 35. Also got tight end Cody Scott and Nick Finch at wide receiver for these Gladiators. That seal's going to throw. He's going to throw deep over the middle of the field. And that's reeled in right over the middle of the field. Cody Scott just mentioned him. Great catch by the big tight end. Yeah, and that's what, you know, that's what tight ends do for you is uh, find themselves open, push down the field. He got himself a little bit covered, but he makes the great catch. He goes down and picks up a huge gain for uh, <clears throat> St. Louis. 6'5", 225, as a seal is going to throw it over the middle, dumps it off. He's got Diaz, who gets knocked down at the 38, and some good chunks of yardage coming out of this uh, Gladiator offense. And this is what's been, you know, working for them, although despite the record shows that uh, they are in a two-losing streak, they have been very consistent on their passing game. So uh, if they continue to do it, work hard in getting those yards and touchdowns, then, you know, they can get a win. Second and two from the Queen City 38. And off to Diaz, who busts through the line, ran over one defender, and he makes it out to the 33-yard line for a first down. That was exceptional blocking. and he was, They were able to open up a path right in the middle, right in the gut, and Diaz just takes the opportunity. that picks up, I think that was eight yards, good for first down. Hand off to a, excuse me to Diaz once again as Seal takes the snap, and he's going to hand it off to Diaz for just a yard on that play. Good play there by the Queen City Corsair defense. Yeah, and but then finding Diaz as he was attempting to again an open pass in the middle, but he shuts that down quickly. Uh, he denies Diaz another big one. So a second and nine this time. A seal to throw, has time over the middle of the field, right at the sticks, and they're going to mark it as a first down. Another good play by Scott to get the first down for his Gladiators. And Yeah, that was, that was actually a very close one. It almost looked like he didn't get it over, and this is what QCC has to keep themselves unguarded. It's these short passes, this high, you know, high percentage passes that are getting them the yards, getting them the first down. A seal empty in the gun. He's going to throw right over the middle, and that's Diaz trying to lower the shoulder. Ooh. But he gets absolutely mauled. I believe that's Avery King laying the lumber. Only a three-yard gain on that play. Yeah, and as he said, he tried to lower his shoulder, but it's Avery King's shoulder that hits him in the head. You know, big hit. He still picks up three yards. Oscar Dunkley, Leroy Jenkins are the two corners for the Corsairs. Jeff Duffy down at defensive end. Zane Doty, Achilles Frank, and Nacho Sicario are the safeties for the Corsairs. Lofty throw in the middle of the field, and that's picked off. He was looking for his fullback, I believe, but that's picked off by Achilles Frank, and Queen City will go the other way. What the... I think it's sort of a miscommunication. As you see here, Achilles Frank beats the catcher to the ball. Um... Yeah, Dylan ACL probably didn't see Achilles Frank running, running in to get the pick. And good defensive play. Wow, what a swing of momentum. Heck of a bend don't break there for Queen City. And they're going to take over on offense now. AJ Caswell, the longtime Corsair, he's going to hand it off to Ash Odom, one of the more dangerous running backs in the SFL. And he rips off a 12 yard gain as soon as he gets the touch. Yeah, Ash Odom averaging. Uh, 6.2 yards per per you know per carry this season, and that's what you want from your runner is you know five or more yards, and then this one he picks up more than 10. So just consistently getting first downs for your team, and that is why Ash Odom is one of the top running backs this season. Chris Curtis and Dupree Hudson, the other two weapons for AJ Caswell on offense. We'll get to the Gladiator defense here on the next play. Offset eye formation for Caswell. 
He's going to hand it off again to Odom. Odom squeaks through the first tackle, does not make it through the second. And he gets nailed down at the, at the 33, second and nine. Well, there Odom showcases his strength despite being stopped behind the line. Guess what? He picks up a yard, ends up in front of the line. Scott LaRue, Shane Masters, Mandrake Perp all on the defensive line there. Colin Douglas, the star corner. Ajamu Afalabi at linebacker there. And I think he came in. No, that was one of the – no, Ajamu Afalabi is right there. He's trying to get into the trenches, make that stop. Yeah, and good on him to make that stop because Ash Odom is looking to be a very big weapon this game. Uh, they just have to stop him from getting on fire. Uh, they just showed there what they have to do consistently for this. And then, of course, we have Freeman Peltier and Ethan Kai as your safeties for the Gladiators. Third and nine now for the Corsairs. Caswell to throw. He's got a man over on the left-hand side. That's Dupree Hudson. What a tackle to wrap him up and prevent him from getting the first down. And the Gladiators will get a chance to go the other way. And, yeah, as he, yeah that's right. It is indeed a great tackle. He just almost makes the one extra yard, but no good defense shuts it down. They make up for the interception, bring the ball back their way. So Ricky Matthews, the kicker and punter for this Corsairs team. And he will give it the boot and send it down to St. Louis after their first possession. Good hang time as Juan Moore fields it at about the 30 before he's wrapped up. No, excuse me, about the 20 before he's wrapped up. And that will be the 24-yard line where the Gladiators will take over for their second possession. So good success before they got into the red zone there and threw that pick, obviously. Yeah, that's right. And I think... They, they want to do the same on this drive. And, of course, they can do it with this you know, this wide array of weapons that Dylan Aisil has for him to use. Remember, friends, if you want all of the SFL scores up to date in the palm of your hand, download the ScoreStream app from Apple or Android. It is free as a seal is lining it up. It's free as a bird down the middle of the field for Cody Scott once again and a heck of a play by the tight end again. And when I said weapons, and this is one of his, you know, his big cannons. He is already a cannon himself, and he shoots, shoots a ball into a big, tall target, 6'5", 225. And when he makes that catch, you know that they're in business. Some scores from previous action. Tallahassee pulls off the win against Oklahoma City earlier, 23-17, in a wild game in Baltimore as the Vultures are on a two-game winning streak, 42-38. As a seal is going to throw over the middle once again, a diving attempt, and that's incomplete. That's a gutsy throw over the middle, but uh, probably a similar throw as that interception from the previous drive. Yeah, gutsy is the right word indeed because it looked like coverage was there and his receiver was a little late uh, to the destination of the ball, but you know, you gotta throw it anyway um, because if you have a successful, if you have very good receiver team, just leave, leave it to them to make the big play. Unfortunately, not on that one. Second and 10, a seal's going to throw the out route, get the toes in bounds, and that's Finch with his first catch of the ball game. Good three-yard game. A seal, 6 of 9 for 73 yards so far. He's going to throw once again. He has time. He's going to throw it out to the left, and he's got a man. And it's going to be short of the first down on third down. So St. Louis is going to have to punt as they are outside of field goal range. And good tackle and coverage by Zane Doty. A uh, free safety for Green City. Uh, stop that play. Again, it's the same story on the flip side when QCC had to drive and they were stopped just one yard. And maybe oh. a bit of a shocker here is uh, St. Louis coming out with the offense. We'll see if they snap the ball. It's not exactly a, a formation that they're going to use to try and jump people off sides, but they're running that clock down pretty low. We'll see if they snap it, and they will not. St. Louis will burn their first time out. A little bit of uh, trickeration there. Yeah, that's right. A little bit of mind games, trying to see who has the better, who has the better minds. And... They don't work that time. I don't think it usually works, but you, know, you gotta try. See 
and prove your dominance, whether it be in the mind game. Got Achilles Frank, Shane Marconi, Shravan Prasad, Nacho Sicario, Siege Falco, Mighty RX, and a ton more there in the chat. Want to thank you guys for hanging out with us this afternoon slash evening. As we're coming to you live from Compro Field in Buffalo, New York. Eric Vincent alongside Mark Lopez. And Harish Prasad on stats tonight. Good to have him along. Fourth and two. This is a good looking punt. If the gunner can actually field it and he won't. Oh, he was just watching it the whole time, Mark. What was going on? I, I don't know. A little hesitation. And, you know, whenever you have a hesitation, that's what happens. You, know, you don't get the you don't get good things come your way. And you know Graham Northrup is gonna be peeved as he goes to the sidelines with his gunners. Yeah, that was a heck of a punt there. It was. It was a good one. And sometimes it's the bounce of the ball as well. Queen City to throw to start things off. Got him in over the middle of the field. That's Dupree Hudson. And he gets a good chunk of yards. He's already got 23 on two catches. And that's a first down for the Corsairs. Yes. And what a play. What a pass. What a catch. Right in the middle. He runs this route. It's a laser pass. Oh, boy. Good, good, good times. Good stuff. I don't think Caswell knows how to throw anything different. I, I, he's just constantly throwing laser beams to his receivers, and it's fun to watch. First and 10 from the 34 inside of four minutes to go here in the first quarter. Caswell to throw. Pressure coming. He's going to throw it over the middle. Almost picked off. He was looking for one of his extra wide receivers, but good defense by this Gladiator team. Yeah, that's right. Good defense all around. Good pressure. Uh, good coverage they were about to get the pick and overall just getting that that stop or not stop but yeah preventing that completion is very good in their end now they're stuck second and ten and there's the jamu afalabi we were talking about him earlier offset eye formation for the corsairs second and ten from the 34 caswell's gonna throw again he's gonna zing it out to his fullback trying to throw the stiff arm gladiator's not biting and that's a good wrap up and a good tackle for only a couple and again, this is a good D right here. Third and eight, it's going to be tough on St. Louis to convert in this one. Or, I mean, is it, it's Queen City. My bad. Gunnar Remington, the uh, guy able to get in there and wrap him up. Four wide outs, trips towards the top of your screen there for Queen City on third and eight. Caswell to throw. He's going to throw deep over the middle, and he's got a man. That's going to be a first down for the Corsairs out to the 47-yard line. And again, another laser pass with perfect timing. A.J. Caswell finds his man, pinpoint accuracy. And, yeah, as I said, and this is interesting because QCC, or Quinn City, known to be one of the top running teams, is showing a very mean passing game. They don't have a ton of options as far as the passing attack goes. Chris Curtis is usually putting up good numbers, and Dupree Hudson kind of follows along with him as well. But you're absolutely right. Ash Odom's usually the one that's coming up with these big numbers, and St. Louis almost came up with a big pick there. Yeah, almost. And if he had you know, just one more second to get his second arm, and the way he could have even come down with the interception. But good D, good D overall. But yeah. Was the good little volleyball whack back over to his buddies. Five wide for Queen City, second and ten from the 47. High snap, Caswell's going to throw over to the left. He's got a man, Dupree Hudson, yanking it out of the air over Colin Northrup's coverage. Great play by the young wide receiver. And he keeps finding Dupree Hudson to making making those big yards, big big gains and this is this is very similar to st louis's first drive of the game where they've been passing slowly but surely well not slowly actually they're getting big gains and surely getting towards the goal line let's see if st louis can get a big stop 33rd pick of the second round is dupree hudson and he's showing why he should have been a first round selection as ash odom gets a handoff here he gets about three or four as they'll mark him down at the 20, just about into the red zone. Here we go. 
yeah, that was a good attempt, but against the against this St. Louis defense, they have they have decent men in the middle to stop that. Yes, good defense overall. And I forgot to mention Kyrie Tate is one of the other options that Queen City has on offense. Hand off to Ash Odom, who goes absolutely nowhere. Off a lobby was in there to make the stop, and that's a loss of a couple. And that was a good read by the defense because it looked like uh, Odom was intending to go to the weak side, but no, they rotate everyone. It seems like, and stop that behind the behind the yard or behind the line of scrimmage. So, good defense. Third and nine from the 22. Caswell to throw. He's gonna throw an out route to Curtis, who gets his feet in bounds, but he's not gonna make it to the first down marker. And it's going to be fourth and four. Matthews is going to have to come out for a field goal try. Yeah, that's right. And that's the consolation that they have. It's a shame that they could have, you know, gotten a touchdown for themselves the way that they've been playing for this drive. They're just going to settle for a field goal. Set, uh, putting them up 3 They are now uh, in the lead. With the wheel. They are going to give the ball back <clears throat> to St. Louis. Give them a chance to come back and punch back. Spygoat, our newest sponsor of the SFL, and that kick almost blocked as it goes up and through. So Ricky Matthews able to make a bad snap, good for his team, and Queen City takes a 3 to nothing lead despite what the uh, scoreboard guy has to say down there. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, you know, it's these second teams that make, or yeah, second team special teams that make the game very interesting. Boy, oh boy, that kick was blocked we'll, we'd be in for a very interesting ball game still could be in for an interesting ball game we've only had one score in the entire quarter only 45 seconds left to go and st louis is going to get the ball back we'll see if they can answer as matthews boots it down the field more to field it inside his own 10 he's going to bring it up the field looks like he's got some room and he makes it out to the 33 yard line good return for one more yeah good return and again uh, setting themselves up to start good, start early for another strong drive. And I, th this, very, this mirror is their very first drive. And I keep going back to the first drive because that's where they have shown the good things of their offense passing-wise. So they're looking to do it again here. Two backs in the backfield for a seal. Two wide outs as well. A seal with a short drop. Flings it over to the sideline. And that was almost picked off again, almost Achilles Frank's second pick of the day. Oh boy, that was a very questionable pass. He should have seen the coverage right there. It was, boy oh boy. Um, yeah, Eric, this is a good defense by both teams. Look, pulling down fast deflections left and right. We're going to be in for a good game, partner. I told you prior to getting on air here that this was going to be a good one. Three wide outs, two towards the top of the screen. DS sidecar right, excuse me, sidecar left. And he's going to do play action and get swallowed up behind the line. A sack for the Corsairs. Knocks them back to the 35. Jeff Duffy with a great hit. That was great. He just finds his way all in a row. I think he finds his way around two guys from the line. Brings the quarterback down. What a big play. A loss of seven yards or six-ish. Jeff Duffy, the big-time defensive end on the line there. So with a third and 17, a seal with no choice but to air it out. And he is going to air it out. And it's another interception for the Corsairs. Going back the other way, I believe that was Nacho Sicario with his pick. And that's two interceptions for this Corsair defense. Wow. And, oh, wow. The Corsair defense just set that up, getting a sack to put them back, forcing ACL to make a very predictable, very... Yeah, predictable. Telegraph pass. Easy pick. Now, again, QCC looking to make another point. And that's what a good defense does for you as well, is they set themselves up for success by making the offense make mistakes. And that's basically what happened with that big sack there on third and forever. Yes, that's right. Three wideouts for Caswell. He's under center. Odom's in the backfield. He's going to hand it off to Odom, who's following blockers, lowering his shoulder, makes it out to the 29-yard line. It's going to be a nine-yard gain as we end the first quarter of action here in Buffalo. 
A good tight ball game so far, but Queen City knocking on the door. Three to nothing, your score here in Buffalo. You're watching the SFL on YouTube presented by APM Music. Yeah, and it looks tight, but it seems that UCC has been dominating the offense. They've only gotten three points, you know, care of the good St. Louis defense, but they're looking again to dominate on this offense. Second hand short from the 29. Another handoff for Odom. Odom following blockers, has some room, lowering his shoulder again, and he's inside the red zone, 32 yards on seven carries for Ash Odom. And Ash Odom saying, I don't need a lot of blockers. I'll just take the ball myself. You know, he did find his way with some of his blockers and then breaks one tackle, almost, you know, powers through that one. Good stuff from Ash Odom. Ethan Kai, no match for Ash Odom on that one. 6'1", 230. He definitely looks bigger, though. Yes. Big guy, indeed. First down from the 18. Caswell again to hand it off to Odom. Odom just making all sorts of room into the end zone. They're going to mark it as a touchdown. Boy, oh boy. If he made that touchdown, I would have called him. Oh, damn. Because, man, that was a big play. A huge play. We'll get a look on the replay here. The St. Louis defense stopped him right at the goal line. The referees called it a touchdown. We'll see if this is challenge worthy, though. I don't know. I don't know, Mark. Might be worthy of throwing the red flag there. That's right. Hmm. But we're gonna get no challenge flag. Well, yeah, I thought as I thought as well that he was just behind the line. So, wow, they get away get away with it still a heck of a run by ash odom another low snap this one again could have possibly been blocked but the corsairs luck out and they take a 10 to nothing lead and now they're definitely the driver's seat in this game um st louis is now pressured to make two points of their own in order to be ahead of this game eight attempts 50 yards and that touchdown you just saw for ash odom on the night and Ricky Matthews will get set to kick it off once again for the Corsairs. Juan Moore to field it just outside of his 10-yard line. He's bringing it up the field. He's had a couple good returns. This one not quite as good as they'll mark him down at the 30-yard line. We'll see what St. Louis can do now to answer. Yes, that's right. And, you know, it's tough because, as I said, they have been one of the best passing teams. And despite the record not showing, it's because of defensive teams able to take opportunity of the littlest mistakes that the St. Louis Thief, our offense, gives them. First and 10 from the 30 for the Gladiators. High snap, a seal in trouble. He's going to go down again. That's that man, Jeff Ferry, getting in for his second sack. Wow, Eric, this is deja vu, I think. We are now second and 17. Well, last drive it was third and 17, but... Again, goes to show how much good pressure that they post. And then he, he just breaks through the offensive line, gets right. a big sack. And now Dylan ACL, he is again for he's being forced to make a big pass. This well, not this one, but yeah, to make another big play, another big risky play, no, in order to get the next down. He's still backed up pretty good, and Duffy getting some pressure again, throws it up, almost another interception. Achilles Frank looking for his second pick yet again. He could have had three by now. And I think if I, we pull up our stats, that would be the um, third passive. No, it's the second passive flexion of the Queen City team. And two interceptions. How many passes has Dylan ACL thrown? 13. Four of those 13 passes have been defended and or intercepted. Wow. Good defense. Definitely got to get Diaz involved in the game, but how can you when you're getting absolutely thrown every time that you're dropping back for a pass? <laughs> Ouch. Boy, not even able to advance yards on this drive. They and they end up further back than when where they started. So, the Queen City defense is just kicking up, kicking up the gear. Want to thank MediaTek Institute for being a sponsor of the SFL. Do what you love, love what you do. 
as we see the snap there, low snap for Northrup, who gets the punt away. Fielded just outside, excuse me, just inside the 40-yard line. And that's Kyrie Tate. And he brings it up to the 42-yard line. We'll get a quick score stream update here. Denver and Vancouver knotted up at 7. And Chicago putting a lick in on Indy right now. 14-0 the score over there. And, of course, your score here, 10-0, as the Corsairs are gearing up to score once again. Hand off to Ash Odom. Squeezes out of the first tackler. I think that was off a lobby. It was trying to drag him down, but Ash Odom getting another six yards on the ground. And the Gladiator defense is just having a hard time bringing down Odom. I think he is just too tough for them to handle. Getting some info from the locker room. Achilles Sprank apparently ate some chili cheese fries before the game. Those sound pretty, pretty daggum good. I'd have to go and check those out. Hand off to Ash Odom, breaking tacklers again. Ash Odom, he must have been getting some Red Bull at the half or before or whenever it was because he can fly, folks. He sure can. Guys, check the manufacturer of this guy's helmet. He just powers through them and the helmets don't break. Boom, boom, pow. Wow, good stuff. Three broken tackles on one play. That's Ash Odom for you. He just keeps doing this every single game. Absolutely incredible. First and 10 from the St. Louis 40. Offset eye formation for the Corsairs. Caswell's going to hand it off to Odom again. Odom just breaking through tacklers. Brings it out to the 36-yard line. Short gain of four that time. And credit to the offensive line. Pancaking one of the DLs and opening up a big path for Ash Odom to just run through on the post. So a second and six from the 36. Caswell and another offset eye, another handoff for Odom. Odom being patient and finding his way across the first down marker to the 29 yard line. Let's get another look at this one, Mark. Yeah, that's right. And looks like this first broken tackle is just a little sidestep. Yeah, and he makes the man miss, fall on his feet. Again, I showed him dominating this game. He is looking pretty daggum good. 72 yards on 12 carries in that touchdown that you see on the scoreboard there. Two backs in the backfield with Caswell. He's got three wideouts. First and 10 from the 29. Caswell's going to do a little QB sneak. St. Louis is ready for that, though, because we've seen Caswell do this several different times where he just kind of sneaks it on through. Yeah. Well, yeah, that's right. Good beat. They have seen this many times. It's no longer a surprise to them. Good, good defensive play right there, but it, you know it's just a matter of ine inevitability to Ash Odom again breaks through and picks another touchdown. They're so close to the end zone. Bo Knowles coming up and making that stop. Ash Odom again trying to break through, and there's Knowles again able to drag him down. As we get a look at the comparison here, and there's really no comparison so far. Denzel D is just not getting enough action in this Gladiator offense. Yeah, that's right. And well, especially if the Queen City defense has been forcing the hand of, of St. Louis, the running play is non existent, basically. Third and eight upcoming for Caswell. He's going to throw it in. He's got a wide receiver inside the five. There's Kyrie Tate with his first catch, first and goal, Queen City. What a great play. And the passing game, of course, uh, Queen City Corsairs, you know, they're not the best passing team, but their passing just complements their incredible running game. It's just like a cherry on top of your Sunday. So now a first and goal from the three, just when it was looking like St. Louis might get out of there with a stop. Caswell says, nah, -uh. Now he's going to hand it off to Odom. Odom just sneaking his way into the end zone. That was the easiest touchdown I think he'll ever have. And I think this is Ash Odom's, yeah, it is, his second touchdown of the game. That would be how many touchdowns this season. He already has nine rushing touchdowns this season. Puts him up to 11. Wow. 
and just no one around him. There was no one even within sniffing distance. No, nope. yeah, I think they were just a little caught up thinking that um, that the Queen City is just going to make another pass, but, you know, it is indeed a very, I think it's a mystery on a defensive end uh, to think that it's going to be a pass where they have always been going for the run. This time a decent snap for Queen City, and that kick is up and through. We will pause for a moment for a word from our SFL sponsors. You are listening to the SFL on YouTube presented by APM Music. Want to do what I do? Contact me in the DM on Discord to find out how you can get involved with streaming live games, calling games, or breaking them down on the air with our broadcast team. Or help make our production even better by joining our new live stats team, helping our broadcasters shine brighter. We are hashtag loading legends in the SFL. Juan Moore taking it up the field, met by a gang of Corsairs. And they will drag him down at the 28-yard line. We'll see what St. Louis can do this time around. They have had more passing yardage than running. But Denzel Diaz is still a very important part of this offense, as I mentioned on that last drive. Yes, that's right. He is key in generating extra yards and picking up first downs. But when you're always second and 17 behind, it's tough to get that first down, especially when um, he's averaging how many yards this season, I think. Thing. Let me pull up my stats. able to pull, get, pull away there while you're looking oh. up that stat there. Cody Scott getting the first down. And that's important there because Duffy was Duffy was coming for him again. He wanted sack number three. That's right. And yeah, good good, <clears throat> good for him letting that ball go. And great catch, picking up first down. As I was saying, Denzel Diaz averaging only 3.4 yards this season. It's tough if they're always far behind third and long, second and long. So... In the previous, the previous play, they showed that they're able to get. And then, of course, you get a handoff to Denzel Diaz, and he gets swallowed up. It's hard to do anything when the Queen City Corsairs are playing so lights out like they are today. That's right. This defense is just smothering. Like, everywhere, everywhere the ball goes, there's two, three, or four defenders on top of it. So we get a look at Asil's numbers. St. Louis coming into the contest here, two and three, after losing two straight. Meanwhile, Queen City winning two straight at 4-1 and one coming in today. Juan Moore with a catch, and that was a good chunk of yards. It's going to be third and manageable as he gets knocked out of bounds. Yeah, that's right. Good chunk of yards, but, you know, just one extra yard. If he could have just extended his feet or his legs, run a bit faster, be more agile. But good. It's still good. It's still a good attempt. Sets him up for third and short. Well, and that's the difference between some of these uh, backup wide receivers and some of the stars that you see out there. As the Seal's going to get the snap, he hands it off to Diaz. Diaz, with some quick feet, able to make it through the line and out across the 46-yard uh, line. Wow, yeah, and that was a key first down, both for him and for his team. You know, this is the confidence booster for him. Uh, he only averaged, you know, he's averaging three yards, as I said, for carry, but that was only one yard and getting a first down is easy easy for him. First and 10 now from the 46. A seal with time. He's going to throw it deep. Bobbled. Incomplete. He was looking for one more in double coverage. Wow. Well, I think the story of this game just has been a seal throwing the ball and a Quinn City arm getting in its way right there. Getting a look here. It was good retreating defense there by Achilles yeah. Frank. Got 36 strong in the chat watching right now. Tyrone Jones, Achilles Frank, Christian Punt, DeAndre Noel, Shervon Prasad, amongst many others. Want to thank you guys for coming out and enjoying this game with us. Second and 10 from the 46 for the Gladiators. Down by 17, hoping to get a score on the board before the half. A seal zings it out to his fullback, who gets gobbled up right along the sideline. But a good chunk of yards there. It's going to be third and four coming up. Yeah, that's right. Good chunk of yards. And I think he should just stick to short, accurate passes because those have been the ones that has been working for him. Just a little bit stubborn making the long play, being the big play. Third and four from the 40. A seal in the gun. He'll take the snap. 
Pressure coming. He's going to throw it over to the right. Does he have the first down? No. They'll mark him just shy as Cody Scott gets marked down at the 36 fourth and inches. So close, man. So close. I wonder if they're, I wonder if they're going to try to push this over. Yeah, it looks like they're going to stay out there. Offense is going to stay out there and see if maybe yes. they can push it through. Inside of three and a half minutes to go here in the first half. They need a score here to kind of keep the momentum going. And they will take the snap. A little play action. A seal's going to throw it over the middle. What a catch! And that's going to be out to the 22-yard line. And the Gladiators extend the drive with a great fourth down conversion. Incredible play. They, you know, they, this misdirection right here. Well, they don't show it in the replay, but everyone was caught with their pants down. And the open man picks up a big first down. Tito Moss, the receiving end of that pass there. Makes it out to the 22. It's a first and 10 as that clock continues to roll here in the first half of play. A seal dropping back. Has time. Pressure coming. And he's going to be a hit from the side and slammed down. Is that Duffy again? Duffy's got a third Ooh. sack on the game. Wow. Duffy. Mr. Sackman. Third sack of the game, and this is good on him. He just finds, no one was looking at him. No one saw him come in, not even his offensive line. Picks up a pivotal um, a sack right there, and I just hope that D Dylan right. threw the ball just to get it off his hands before he was sacked because it took an entire full second for him to be brought down. He has had some trouble getting rid of the football today as Queen City has definitely made their presence felt back there on a seal. He's going to throw on second and 16. Another deep ball and into double coverage. And that's incomplete. Leroy Jenkins out there with a pass defended. Get a defensive play. And they've been all, you know, all throughout this game. It's been good defense, good defense, good defense. Get a stop. Score. And that's why they're up 17 now. Third and 16, a seal with a pump fix, stepping up in the pocket, still going to go down. It wasn't Duffy this time, but they got him down, and it's still going to be another sack for this Corsair's defense. Man, this is a lot of sacks that Dylan is getting. Oh, uh, the sack back there. Certainly looked like that so far. We hit the two-minute warning. Here in Buffalo, you're watching the SFL Network on YouTube, presented by APM Music. St. Louis going to line up for a long field goal attempt here. This is going to be from 49. Matthew Martin, the other star piece to this puzzle for the Gladiators. The kick is up and away. It is through. They'll mark it from 48, but a heck of a kick there by the young Martin. Good kick, man. Just makes it over the bar. And... Puts them up on the board, 317. They still have a long way to go, but they showed some flashes when they converted the fourth down. They just have to make more consistent, more higher percentage plays, to, you know, to get the, get this game back on their on their end. Well, and that's what we were talking about as well. It, you know, it doesn't have to be a touchdown, but any score had to be made, and that's exactly what St. Louis did as they kick it over to Kyrie Tate, who's trying to make some room out to the 29-yard line. That's where Queen City's going to take over with 151 and three timeouts. Get a quick score stream update. Please sure to download the score stream app, the official live scoring app of the SFL, presented by APM Music. Denver and Vancouver still knotted up at 7. And Chicago still with a 14-point lead over Indy. As Ash Odom getting another handoff. And boy, that man can run. Will he beat the defense? No, he'll get dragged down at about the 39-yard line. But what a heck of a run as he patches the century mark in the first half. And that is 32 yards of a run. Insane. This guy is just out of this world. Just another incredible run, and that's what he's been doing all game long. 
Gladiator's just having a heck of a time stopping him today. Offset eye formation. Queen City with a 14-point lead, knocking on the door again with that big run. They're probably going to flag this for DPI, defensive pass interference. And we'll see what the head referee has to say here. And they are going to call Mo Biggins the big defensive tackle for interference there. 6-2-3-10. And that's what happens when you put a defensive tackle in coverage like that. Yeah, that's right. And not what you want to see. You know, this defense is the opposite end of the spectrum compared to Queen City's defense where they're just leaking yards uh, from Queen City. Oof. So to make this even worse, that stops the clock there in addition to the free yardage. So a minute 14 for Queen City, still with all three timeouts. Caswell to throw, throws it quick over the left-hand side. Got a man, that's Dupree Hudson. End of the end zone, touchdown Corsairs. Wow, that was a great play. Oof. What a sweet play, just fooled them, Ash Odom. And this is very similar to the previous, uh, previous drive where Ash Odom runs the ball, runs the ball. Then they just throw a big, a big pass he gets his first touchdown in the game. Or Colin Kyrie Douglas, team. had uh, he had no chance there, unfortunately. Uh, he, I think you're absolutely right. He bit on the run there, and there just wasn't a way to uh, to go ahead and, and correct himself at that point. So St. Louis, again, will have to see if they can get another score on the board to keep themselves relevant in this ballgame. As Queen City knocks through the extra point, it is now 24 to 3, and this has been all Corsair so far. Yeah, that's right. And it's gonna be a big mountain to climb. When the second half begins, it's 21 points. Ouch. Well, St. Louis still got some time though. They got two timeouts. Minute nine left to go. They did get that field goal on the board, so a little bit of momentum going their way offensively, anyway. Juan Moore's going to field it inside the 10, bringing it upfield. Queen City ready for him, and they'll drag him down at the 28-yard line, where we will pause for just a moment from a word from our SFL sponsors. You're watching the SFL on YouTube, presented by EPM Music. Follow the SFL on Twitter, at SimulationFL, on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube and Twitch channels. You're already here, right? Might as well stay tuned. Get league updates on your phone while browsing the internet and make sure you never miss a live broadcast. Thank you for supporting the SFL. And a seal throws it out over to the left-hand side. It's going to be a loss of one on that catch. Also, don't forget that uh, the Simulation, S uh, Simulation Football League has now moved over into Instagram. Simulation FL is the handle over there, so be sure to check that out on Instagram as well. Second and 11 from the 27. Minute one left to go here in the first half. A seal with an offset eye formation. Quick drop. Deep throw into coverage. That could have easily been another interception there, Mark. Yeah, that's right. I wouldn't be surprised if there's going to be a third interception before this ends. But, you know, we have we have seen that uh, looking, up, looking at the updated stats from Harish, um, Dylan Acia only averaging... 10 yards per completion so he's been the only passes he's been making have been within the 10 yard line a seal quick throw as he had pressure coming diaz able to hold on to that one but it's still gonna be a fourth down as diaz unable to make anything from that short little pass there yeah and this is not even in position for a field goal punting it back they had a chance to make one extra point or one point before the first half ends, and they just squandered the opportunity. Shane Marconi, I think, hit the uh, nail on the head there. He said, TBH, a seal is lucky to have not thrown five INTs, which I tend to agree with him there. St. Louis going to go ahead and bleed this clock all the way down as it continues to run. Queen City with no interest in stopping the clock. They're ready to go into the half. Being up 21 points, 
And we still got seven seconds left to go here in the first half, but what a half, specifically by Ash Odom. So in 10 of Dylan's incompletions, seven of those have been defended. Two are rich interceptions, and five are rich are deflected. So, yeah, a corsair hand everywhere the ball goes. Caswell's going to throw. He's going to throw over the middle, and he's got a man. Now they'll burn a timeout with three seconds left. They got a good chunk of yards there, so it's definitely within Hail Mary territory for Caswell. Interesting. Yeah, and I wouldn't be surprised because um, Tate, he was the one who made the last play, right? Kyrie Tate, he had, that was a 24 yard touchdown, and they are, well, they're quite a bit away from 24 yards, but I wouldn't be surprised if he just hauls ass and runs his way to the touchdown. That was Dupree Hudson that last time, but. We, we, we got what you were oh, going yeah. for. Yeah. Yes. Kyrie Tate, his only catch for 24 yards, but still a good catch. Debris Hudson, 80 yards and a touchdown grab. Chris Curtis still with nothing on the board, but he's definitely had some action here. As Caswell pump fakes, and he'll get dragged down, but there is a penalty marker down. We'll see what the head referee has to say about this one. Probably clipping, if I'm uh, not mistaken. Yeah. So the Gladiators will accept that uh -oh. penalty. So it's going to back him up a little bit, and I think we'll get an untimed down, if I'm not mistaken. Since the clock did hit zero, no, we will not. They will bring him into the half. 24-3 to is your score here in Buffalo as the Corsairs taking a commanding lead into the half. 2K Sports Halftime Show coming at you. We'll be right back. Here's some stats and highlights for you in the meantime. Just kidding. 2K decided we didn't need a halftime show, so we'll just go with it from here. We're good, right, Mark? Yeah, that's right. Production right. is just on, on the money right now. Excellent. Quick, quick, quick. Bing, bang, boom. We're back out there. Eric Vincent alongside Mark Lopez. Harish Prasad on stats tonight. Always love having a stat man. And Martin's going to kick this one away to Queen City. St. Louis having all sorts of trouble stopping this rushing attack for the Corsairs, but we'll see what they can do here as Kyrie Tate wing brings it up to the 30-yard line, and that's where Queen City will take over. Eric, if there's anything I want St. Louis to change, it would be their decision to just keep going for those big passing plays. It looks like the things that have been successful for them have been the short passes. I think they should just stick with that because if they just slowly but surely get to the end goal, that's how they can get points. That's how they got their three points. Caswell with a QB sneak, and he's got room. He finally slides down. And what a run there for A.J. Caswell out to the 41-yard line, an 11-yard game for the quarterback. Oh, wow. <laughs> this time, Caswell's, uh, Caswell's sneak is successful, picking up a big first down. Well, 11-yard first down. Spy Goat, your choice for sound reinforcement, our newest sponsor of the SFL. Definitely want to thank them for doing their part in the Simulation Football League. 24 to 3 is your score as Ash Odom following blockers, bowling over defenders. He's still got room. No one's going to catch him. Afalabi's the only one that can sniff him, and he's not even going to get there. Touchdown, Corsairs. Holy Hannah. Well, Ash Odom, he just walks runs behind his blocker the block was not successful he breaks the tackle himself breaks the, let's see it over here uh good block here but the defender gets through still but he just breaks one two and he's gone wow this is his third touchdown unbelievable <laughs> unbelievable indeed I, I, I'm speechless. I, I just don't have anything else to say. Like, th this is just insane. <laughs> yeah, I've run out of things to say. Uh, I gotta study up on my English. Gotta in increase the number of words to describe Ash Odom's incredible ability in this game. Do you think that's something we could Google? Do you think Google would help us with that? Uh, Google synonyms for Ash Odom? I think incredible would be one of the words that comes up. Uh, yeah, that, that, that'd certainly be one of them. So we get a look at Conpro Field here. Everyone up in the nosebleeds up there. 
10-15 left in the third quarter as Ricky Matthews tees up the ball. And his Corsairs are up big here in the third. 31-3 is your score. Juan Moore going to field it just outside the five. He's going to bring it up the field and get met by just about every Corsair special teamer. And he'll get dragged out at the 25-yard line. Well, St. Louis has just not had a, a ton of momentum in this game, offensively, defensively at all. What, what do you think they need to do here in order to get that back on their side here, Mark? That's more of a change in decision-making because a lot of their decisions in the first half have been quite questionable. Um, I guess it's as well as they have probably misread the defense in a few number of times. Denzel Diaz getting a good chunk of yards out to the 26. Eh, a couple yards. It's a good wrap up there. Zane Doty in there on the stop. And yeah, as the Queen City Corsairs are just showing how big of a beast the team is overall. If you have an incredible offense on one end and just this smothering defense on the other, uh, you know, they're definitely going to dominate. They're now leading their conference 4-1 with a record of 4-1. And that's what's happening here today is Denzel Diaz just not getting any sort of room whatsoever. I mean, the passing defense is there. The rushing defense is there. I mean, there's just absolutely nothing that the Gladiators can do currently. So we'll see what a seal can do here with a third and nine from his own 26. He'll take the snap. Good pocket. Over the middle. Might have field, uh, thread the needle there, but... Unfortunately for him, incomplete intended for Finch. Uh, that was unfortunate. It's one of those, it's not the longest pass. That It's similar to the passes that they've been successful with. But again, Quinn City, there to make the defensive play. There's that man, Achilles Frank. Again, he's been in on just about every defensive That's play that everywhere. we've seen. He's literally the Achilles heel of St. Louis. Ooh, I've seen, I see what you did there. Yes, I, I, I had an hour to prepare for that. That was about to say, you were holding on to that one, weren't you? I was, I was. I saw you write it on your pad of paper for a while. Kick is away from Northrop. Another punt for him. And Queen City will get decent field position as Tate brings it out to the 45. Richard Printworks, excuse me, Richard's Printworks, if I could speak correctly, the official SFL gear provider, be sure to check out the ticker there for the phone number and visit uh, simulationfl.net for more details. Offset eye formation for Caswell. Already up 28. We'll see if they can add to it as Caswell's going to zing one over to Curtis who makes the grab and that's a first down for the Corsairs. And Caswell has been really hot this game. He has a quarterback rating of 152 and this is from our updated stats from Harish Prasad. Thank you, Harish, for the incredible stats. Three wide outs, offset eye formation for Caswell again. Hand off again to Ash Odom. This time he goes nowhere. And they were ready for him that time. Yeah, a little bit of, you know, trying to get over their own demons. Ash Odom has been wrecking them. And that stop right there, uh, you know, sure, it's definitely a confidence booster for them. Kilroy Kahula in there on the stop. Caswell's going to throw again. Finds his man, Chris Curtis. Chris Curtis has been a second-half hero here for this Corsairs team, and he makes another catch, but all in the second half. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And he said he's a hero. Well... They're so far ahead that they don't need a hero, but he's just uh, been one anyway. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, good stuff. And a great throw from Caswell, able to just air it out past the defense there. Show Business Studios, the official home of the SFL convention this year. That was a heck of a time. First and 10 from the 26 of St. Louis now. Ash Odom squeezing out of the first tackler, the second tackler, the third tackler, and he gets dragged down at the 12. Oh, that man. Ooh. Ow, 
which man, the first tackle was good because it was it was about to be a tackle for loss. But no, Ash Odom says not strong enough for me. Breaks one, two. Was that four tackles? It was at least three. I, you know, I, maybe we'll give him credit for the fourth. I don't think he needs it at this point. But good grief, man! <laughs> there should be a stat for tackles broken per game. Oof. Offset eye formation again for Queen City. St. Louis really trying to figure out how to make this guy stop running. And they finally knocked him down. Not before he gets to the nine as a gain of three on first and ten. And he might as well just take it all the way to the end zone. Um, yeah, they're just slaughtering St. Louis. St. Louis, uh, they just have to, you know, hold on and somehow end up with a more respectable score because I don't think they're gonna they're able to come back from a 331 lead jump off sides free play for Caswell Caswell's gonna throw and it's incomplete oh. but they're gonna get free five yards there and uh they're gonna mark him at the four here after the penalty yeah that's right and the defensive play was actually good uh it's just a shame that it was an offside Oopsie. And Drake Perp, the guilty party on the play. The perpetrator? Uh, I see what you did there. Oh, yeah, that one was off the top of my head. This <laughs> Didn't have to write that one down, right? Yeah, well, it was quite easy. You set me up for it. Okay, all right. Yeah, that's fair. Second and two now from the four-yard line. 626 frozen on the clock here in the third quarter. Corsair is knocking on the door. Hand off to Ash Odom. That's going to be another easy touchdown for Queen City as they are swashbuckling their way through this game. Yeah, they're just slicing and dicing. St. Louis reeling from all of these touchdowns fourth by Ash Odom. And we'll see here there is almost no one to stop him on his way. Everyone has been blocked, sealed off. You know, we, we say that it's Ash Odom being, you know, a great force that he is, but credit to the blockers making a great path for Ash Odom to oh, just most definitely. Run. So another score for the Corsairs. We'll see if we can get another extra point by Ricky Matthews. And St. Louis probably had a, a <laughs> chance to block that one, but just kind of let it fall by the wayside. So. A little bit of a of a whoopsies there. He is he was right in front of it, and then he just stops in front of the ball. Thirty-eight to three. Now the score here in Buffalo, and the hometown fans getting up to go get more nachos, more beer, more good stuff there at the concession stands because uh, they're not really missing anything out on the field here. No, nope. and did you say nachos? Because nacho Sicario has been big this game. Man, you are you are full of the connections today, my friend. I know. I think I think something's over me. Some spirit has come upon me. I like it. I support it. We'll probably need this spirit in future broadcasts then. Yeah, bring him along. I don't know who the spirit is, but yeah, bring him along. Absolutely. The more the merrier. And St. Louis is going to need some sort of spirit. They've probably lost all spirit in this game. They just they have not know, shown they much spirit. No, <laughs> no, not much. A seal's gonna throw though. He's got a deep pass, and what a pick! Finally, Achilles Frank gets another interception. He's been gunning for one ever since maybe the and first quarter. That's right. I think this this was a behind behind the back behind over the head catch. No, it's just a over the head catch. But yeah, good pick as you said. And again. Queen City have the ball back on their way, back on their end. How much more are they going to score on top of St. Louis? Well, we got to look at uh, Hash Odom's numbers there. He's going to cross the 200-yard mark here soon. Caswell hasn't had to throw the ball a ton. He's going to throw it here, though. And it's a short pass over to Dupree Hudson, and he gets about a four-yard gain, second and six after the 43. And Dupree Hudson, a very consistent catcher, five or six catches for 84 yards, averaging 16 yards per reception. Uh, yeah, he's been a big factor in them uh, getting this much points as well. 
Offset eye at second and six there for Caswell. He's going to hand it off to Ash Odom. This time not really getting a ton. He'll mark him down at the 42. It'll be third and six coming up here. And as this game is winding down, there was a little fight as well. But, you know, uh, this is still all you know, just fun and games for these teams. Uh, St. Louis trying to find their way. Queen City asserting dominance and showing that they are the team to beat heading into probably the offseason. I mean, the playoffs. Caswell's going to throw. He's got a man. Hudson might have the first down. He does. Able to twinkle toe inbounds there. And he'll make it out to the 36 and extend the drive once again for Queen City. And a very interesting, you know, sort of switch of styles. Now they're just going for short passes, um, showing St. Louis how it's done. Because, as I said, St. Louis, uh, the short pass has been working for them. But guess what? It's also been working for Queen City. Quick score stream update, the official live scoring app of the SFL. Denver with a three-point lead over the Vancouver Legion, 10-7. And then Chicago taking a commanding lead over Indy, 21 to nothing. And Ash Odom is commanding this ballgame as he's going to get inside the 10-yard line, down to the 7, 223 yards on the ground for the running back for Queen City. Wow. And I think probably if he gets his fifth touchdown, I don't know what is the most touchdowns by a single individual in the game ever. Um, by the way, if you guys don't know, we have the, uh, what what is it, the media book that you can purchase where you can get all those very interesting stats which i i think i have to purchase that i want to see that stat i believe andy hamilton still has some of those for sale might want to hit him up see if he's got anything extra and ash odom he doesn't have much extra in the tank he has given absolutely everything today as he gets drilled at the one yard line he's given it everything indeed and you know at some point though um as coach, I might just want to sit him down because as much as he has been showing, he has also been hit hard many times. I wouldn't want to harm him and his good health. QB oh. sneak for Caswell. Caswell wanting to get on the action, and he gets a rushing touchdown on the board. Doing some push-ups and showing that, yeah, I can take touchdowns of my own too. Good stuff. This is an unbelievable game for Queen City here. Trying to keep everybody updated in the chat. Saw Tom Pepper poke his head in. Uh, Christian Pundit, uh, Kanye Rockefeller, Shane Marconi, Ethan Kai in there, Tyrone Jones, Blue Tiger. A whole bunch of guys in the chat. As Matthews knocks through another extra point. And it is now 45-3 in favor of the Corsairs. A 42 points margin. And it is going to be difficult for St. Louis to crawl out of this one. Yeah, that's right. And I don't think they will. But they're going to have to at least put up a fight. But not much of a fight put up so far. Matthews boots it away. Moore going to field it just inside his 10. He's going to bring it upfield and get gobbled up at about the 26-yard line where we will pause for a moment for a uh, word from our SFL sponsors. You're watching the SFL on YouTube, presented by APM Music. The Simulation Football League is presented by APM Music and is the official theme music provider of the SFL. Listen to their Champions Will Rise soundtrack at apmmusic.com today and search through thousands of tracks to boost the quality of your stream just like us. APM Music, production music library and custom music house. Certainly an interesting right. play there on the last one, uh, Mark. <laughs> Quick little yeah, pass right. and uh, thumping almost, by the Queen City. <laughs> almost another interception. But it results in a second and 10 from the 26. 
A seal barking out signals. Delayed handoff. Plain action. He's going to throw it over to the right-hand side. Completed pass. And it's going to be third and five coming up as we get a no look at the numbers for the quarterbacks today. And that was a little bit of, uh, you know, that's good things, good little things from that one play. Um, a little bit of uh, run fake. And he gets the ball before he gets he brought down, which is good. He gets the ball out of his hands. For a Denzel Diaz with a handoff, trying to find some room. Gets out to the 35-yard line, but he marked just shy of the first down. And St. Louis is going to have to punt once again. Yeah, so close. And actually, I would have liked to seen uh, the offensive line push him forward because it appeared that no one was there to help him get the extra one yard. But good attempt. But against the Corsair defense, a good attempt is not enough. You need that incredible attempt. So Northrop will punt again. Kyrie Tate fielding it at about his 30. He'll bring it up to the 36. And he's a little slow to get up, but he hops back up on his feet. And I'm not sure what St. Louis is talking about there. He's pointing at the scoreboard like, yeah, you guys are winning. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Have you had enough? I don't. Yeah, I don't know what they're saying either. So, um, But I'm guessing they're just a little upset that they're sort of running up the score, I think is what they're complaining about. You know, I, I have an opinion on running up the score. If you don't want them to run up the score, then stop them. That's a very good opinion that I am, that I also share with. Odom with his, I believe his 23rd carry of the ball game as, get a look at Caswell's numbers there. Odom with a three yard gain brings up second and seven from the 40. Offset eye, another handoff for Odom. Thought he had a hole there, but good play by the St. Louis defense wrapping him up. And I believe that was the defensive tackle getting in there. That was. It was Masters getting in there and dragging him down. Yeah, and we've seen this a few times uh, for the past couple of drives. There we go. Back on the air now. Sorry about that, guys. Just a quick little hiccup. If you're just joining us, 45 to 3, your score as the Corsairs are starting to pour it on here as Ash Odom gets another big chunk of yardage out to the 43 yard line, second and two coming up here for Cor for the Corsairs. And this is going to be a big question that each team moving forward has to answer. Each team that uh, Queen City will face is how do they stop this one guy? And they did stop that one guy that time. He's averaging 8.9 yards a carry. Kahula able to drag him down by his ankles, but, I mean, 8.9 yards, that's thats some heavy lifting right there by the running back. Indeed, 8.9. That is almost a first down every carry. Third and two from the 43. Offset eye formation again for Caswell. Caswell's going to hand it off again to Odom, patiently following blockers, and he gets the first down and more out to the 33-yard line of St. Louis. Corsairs just keep on moving those chains. Yeah, and you know, we're, we keep talking about Ash Odom, but if he keeps, if he keeps being the highlights, then there's nothing else to talk about. We see there that... He, uh, just as much as he is a powerful runner, he's also a very patient runner, waiting for his blockers to develop, finding that one little opening. Uh, he probably didn't catch it in the replay, but he just shoots through that one opening, picking up lots of yards. Short amount of time left to go here in the third quarter, and right up the middle goes the backup into the end zone. Another touchdown for Queen City, and this rushing attack has just been absolutely insane. And they're just shooting holes into St. Louis. St. Louis is a sponge because they just keep absorbing. Well, probably the wrong, you know, the, the wrong analogy, but they just keep letting points go through. Ouch. This time, Todd Mack, the uh, backup running back, 
as he hangs up a 50 burger on the board. It's now 51 to 3. We'll see if Ricky Matthews can make it 52 to 3. And uh, this this game got out of hand here pretty quick, Mark. That's right. It's getting more out of hand as the seconds go by. Kick up and through, so it is a 52 to three ball game. So we get a look at the scoreboard here in Cod Pro Field. Ricky Matthews teeing the ball up again. And we'll see if uh, head coach Eric Barkley wants to just bring out the twos and uh, let them play the final quarter because I, I don't anticipate St. Louis uh, putting up any sort of fight anytime soon, unfortunately for them. Oh, it's still the third quarter? It is still the third quarter, my friend. <laughs> <laughs> I was, okay, I was almost ready to just hang up and <laughs> I had the call, but okay, so. We still got know, 10 just, seconds left in the third I, quarter, man. <laughs> this shows how much uh, Queen City Corsair is, is dominating. I, you know, there's no, there's no, whatchamacallit, what's that rule when you just get ahead so Mercy far? rule. Mercy rule, that's right. There's no mercy rule, I, I believe, so they just keep going. And it's painful to watch if you're a St. Louis fan. A seal able to zing it out over to Finch, who makes the two-yard catch there. And get a look at his numbers. And uh, looks like we got some fun guys in the chat over here. Brandon Johnson, sounds like he's a newcomer, wants to bring in an SFL franchise to Los Angeles. Ooh. Getting some, uh, some words Big from the commissioner away. there to visit the website. By the way, our website is simulationfl.net. Feel free to check that out. As we come to a close here in the third, Queen City all over St. Louis as you're watching the SFL Network on YouTube presented by APM Music. Second and eight from the 29. Fourth quarter just getting started here in Buffalo. A seal to throw. He's going to throw it out over to Diaz. And he gets his feet in bounds but loses those last couple there. So it's going to be third and long coming up. And they are just out of gas. Lost all their spirit. You know, when you receive this kind of battering... It's just almost impossible to find any motivation left to play a good game. So, you know, I, I'd like to see St. Louis put up a fight because moving forward, it's just the sort of grit that you want to see teams because it's grit that makes a good team, right? Grit Most definitely. despite being down. Most know? definitely. I would agree with that. Uh, St. Louis, unfortunately, unable to piece something together here on this drive, and it's going to be fourth and three. So right. we will get you a score stream update as Vancouver has now taken the lead in their ball game over at Canada Field, 14-10 over the Denver Nightwings. And the other ball game we got going on, an oddball score, but 21-2 is your score from the Thunderdome there in Chicago. Be sure to download the score stream app, which is the official live scoring app of the SFL. And big DMJ9 in chat says 52-3. Really? Um, yes, that's what everyone has been saying all all this broadcast. It's a it's a ridiculous game. It's a incredibly one-sided game. Um, but you know, I encourage everyone to keep staying because we there's still an entire quarter to go. Maybe St. Louis makes just one miracle play. It's not going to win them the game, but it's going to make for a good show. Ash Odom has been making a good show today. Is he still in the ball game? 258 yards on 29 carries today for the big running back for Corsairs. That's uh, those are some big numbers. I, th I think big is the understatement of the, of the year. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I'm so sorry. That is a humongous. <laughs> Second and three, another handoff for Odom. Blockers making a convoy for him, and he gets about a five-yard gain there. Another first down, though, as the Corsairs move the sticks. And with ten, just under ten minutes to go, um, 
Eric, I'm just running out of words to say about this game. It has been an incredible showing by uh, by Queen City. I, I wonder what St. Louis has left to show. I wonder if they have any other trick left in the bag. Well, they got to get on the field first as far as offense goes because Ash Odom has just been tearing them apart on defense. Freeman Peltier coming up and making the stop there on defense, but Ash Odom rips off another six yards on first down. Yeah, and he just dances. He says, you know, he, he has enough energy left to dance to jiggle. Thanks for joining us today, guys. 52-3, to three, your score. Play-by-play -play commentator Eric Benson alongside Mark Lopez. And we've got uh, Harish Prasad on stats today as Ash Odom almost makes it past the first down marker. And Kahua has, has made his presence spell today. Look at that. Seven tackles for the backup defensive end. And, yeah, that's what you want to see from even from your backups because everyone is important. Yeah, good defense right there. So third and short. We'll see if Odom can get the first down, and he's going to get tackled past the first down marker. And Queen City has just been tearing them apart today on the ground. Indeed. How many yards again? I think that would put him over 300 yards. And I'd imagine so at this point. Ooh. Ash Odom. Caswell dropping back to pass. He's going to throw it over to the left-hand side. It's a rare pass for uh, this Queen City offense here as Dupree Hudson gets another grab. Yeah, it's rare, but he's made 12 of 14. It's the rare but highly successful pass. Incredible. Let's get a look at Dupree Hudson's numbers there. He's... Had, uh, he's, he's been uh, popular in the passing game. Again, Caswell hasn't thrown it a ton, but he's definitely thrown it Hudson's way more than a few times. As Caswell's changing things up, it's going to be a handoff to Mack, who gets stood up at the line. And it's going to be a third down coming up here for the Corsairs off a of lobby, and they'll stop. I like the guts of this backup running back. Uh, Mack, was it? Yeah. He just charges right in, despite being stopped in the line of scrimmage. He just forces his way through and that's the kind of spirit that I wanted to see from St. Louis even if you get stopped they'll just push through so uh, we'll see when St. Louis gets the ball back we'll see what they do Caswell in trouble he's gonna find a receiver that's Chris Curtis wide open on the sidelines and he'll get hit out of bounds by Ethan Kai it's gonna be another first down for Queen City good stuff and wow Chris Curtis has been he said that he's been the hero He's definitely the unsung hero of this game because silently he has gotten um, lots of yards. So another first down from the 27. You're absolutely right, Mark. Lots of yards. Turnaround handoff this time. And I believe that's Mac. We might have seen the last of Ash Odom for the evening as Todd Mack has gotten a couple carries here. Oh, yeah. Well, Pepper Ammon Jr. in chat asking St. Louis, what happened? Well, I guess Ash Odom happened because he has had over 300 rushing yards. Um, how many touchdowns? Four touchdowns. It's been quite a day for Ash Odom. He's definitely going to be the 2K sports player of the game as he he gets another handoff. I was wrong. Ash Odom's still in the game. He's still getting yards. He's back. <laughs> still in this. He's not done yet, folks. He's not done yet. He's going to be St. Louis's nightmare when they go to bed tonight. Well, it's a third and one coming up now. Queen City doing their best to chew up as much clock as possible here. St. Louis expecting the run. Doesn't matter. Odom's going to strike right up the middle of the field. And it's going to be a first and goal from the 10. St. Louis just has got nothing left on the defensive end to stop this guy. 
They get they stop him behind the line of scrimmage one time, two times, but they just let him through the next four, five, six times. So, um, and I guess this is sort of the matchup thing as well. Uh, when, despite St. Louis having four star players in the middle, they are just getting overrun. And Caswell is going to do another QB sneak here. This time he gets maybe half a yard. And they'll drag him down in the middle of the field. I think that was Kahula again getting another stop. That looked like a, almost like a big hit. A little bit worrisome if AG Castle gets a big hit. That's too much for him to handle. Uh, you know, I, I, I enjoy these quarterback sneaks, but whenever he gets hit that hard, I'm I'm you know hesitant to let him do it again. That was his coach. Well, backups are going to be in the ball game now. As we'll get a snap from the backup quarterback, throwing it over the middle of the field, which is a catch. It's going to be a third and goal coming up here. And that was Max Barney getting in on the action with his first throw. And the question of the day, will this be a touchdown? I mean, I, I don't see how it would, and it certainly would be good for St. Louis to... You know, get them get a stop and make sure they don't get on the board here. But it, it hasn't been pretty on defense for the Gladiators today, unfortunately for them. Barney letting the play clock, clock drain all the way down. It's going to be a handoff to Mack, and Mack is going to have an easy touchdown. And it's now going to be 58-3 as Queen City is pouring it on here. Just another easy run there. Good blocking from the, the big hefties up front. So Barney's going to lay down the hold here for Ricky Matthews as he tries to kick through yet another extra point. While he's doing that, we'll get another score stream update here. Vancouver in the fourth quarter against Denver in a tight one up at Canada Field. Uh, they are at uh, they were at the score of 14 to 10, and over in the Thunderdome in Chicago, the Wildcats up by 19 over the visiting Red Devils. James Richards trying desperately to get a win for his ball club. We'll see what happens with those contests. We're pretty certain what's going to happen from this one today here, Mark. Yes, quite certain indeed. If big. Was an understatement of uh, Ash Odom's numbers. Certain is also an understatement for the ending of this game. 59 3. 56 points on top of St. Louis. And three minutes to go. You thought we were in the fourth quarter the last time. <laughs> yes. Now we are indeed in the fourth quarter. Yes, we are. Yes. Okay. Just make it sure. Yes, we are. This time, a seal's going to have plenty of time. He throws it over to the left-hand side. It was almost another interception. Good gracious. He needs to throw it to his own guys. <laughs> That's right. And when the seal goes to bed tonight, all he's going to be dreaming of are Twin City hands because it's always been in his way, this game, to get in the way of his passes. Hands everywhere. Passes deflected everywhere. So while this game kind of winds down to a close here, we do have one more ball game on the slate today. 7.30 Central, 8.30 Eastern. Chris Curtis and Ramos Lynn will be calling San Francisco at Alaska. That should be a decent ball game as San Francisco has found some life here in recent weeks. And then we'll also have the Fury of Las Vegas visiting Mexico City down at Estadio Azteca. Cameron Irvine, your commissioner, and Stephen Molinax will have the call on Twitch tomorrow evening as well as we get a third down coming up here. Now the score stream update. Chicago Wildcats have defeated the Indianapolis Red Devils 28-9. So congratulations to the Wildcats for the victory today. And congratulations to both these ball clubs that we have called the game for today, Mark, because uh, they, they certainly came out. St. Louis has played hard. Just Queen City, they've just been no match for Queen City today. That's right. Outmatch, indeed, is the right word. Um, especially in the running play. 
they don't have the manpower. They have the um, they have the men, but not enough manpower to stop the beast that is Ash Oda. With fourth and three, forced to go for it, they're gonna get the first down if he's able to stay in bounds. Nice. And that was, that was Finch on the catch there. Yeah, little Twinkle Toes getting his feet in at the very last minute. Good one. That, that's one of the shiny moments. Of, oh, what is this? We're going to add insult to injury here and <laughs> challenge this one. Have you not had enough? Oh, man. No, they have not had enough yet. Man, just pouring salt into the wound with the red challenge flag here. I, I wasn't sure if he got his feet inbounds, honestly. But maybe, well, oh. maybe he did. Maybe he did. That was a, that was a better angle there. A little 50-50 there, but Eric Barkley acting like the heel you know, in terms of wrestling. A little oh, and, bit of, uh, and they're definitely going to overturn it. Oh, goodness gracious me. So that's going to be an incomplete pass on fourth down, which means Queen City is going to get the ball back. And there is still time left on the clock, folks. There's 2.54 left to go. And good starting field position for the backups. Barney, your quarterback now. And Todd Mack in the backfield on an offset eye. Mack is going to get the handoff, and he gets about two or three before St. Louis drags him down. And Mack learning a bit from Ash Odom uh, in terms of waiting for the blockers to develop. He found his opening, but just not enough power to break through a couple of defenders. And guess who has the power? Ash Odom. How many times have I said Ash Odom's name? How many times have we said Ash Odom's name today? I mean, obviously plenty, because he just ran it all over God's green earth today. But goodness <laughs> gracious, I mean, it, it's, it's been an absolutely insane, the kind of show he's put on today. And we'll get a look from Todd Mack here as Barney gives him the ball. He lowers his shoulder, trying to do his best Ash Odom impression, and he'll make it out to the 30-yard line. Yeah, that's right. That's good hustle right there. Makes one guy miss and tries to lower his shoulder. Uh, unfortunately, he just gets stopped. But, as I said, good hustle. That's what I want to see from, from the back. And we have hit the two-minute warning here in Buffalo at Conpro Field. Too much to not enough is your score, and you're watching the SFL Network on YouTube presented by APM Music. APM Music, Production Music Library, and Custom Music House for all your live streaming needs. Be sure to check them out and check out our official soundtrack as Matt gets a handoff up the middle of the field. St. Louis going to burn a timeout here. Trying to save a little face and maybe get some points on the board. Yeah, that's right. But by the time they do that, Green City is probably going to make more points of their own, which is quite unfortunate for St. Louis. Clock frozen at a minute and 56 seconds. Right. Meanwhile, getting a look over at Canada Field, still a 14 to 10 ball game, but Vancouver is lining up for a field goal. So they just made it a 17 to 10 ball game over on the other network here for the SFL. Still on YouTube, so check that out as well. As Todd Mack with some shifty footwork there, and uh, he'll make it out to the 18-yard line. St. Louis will burn their second timeout. And Mack showing some good potential right there. He he goes around multiple defenders, and yeah, he's showing the grit that St. Louis. You know that I want. I would have wanted to see St. Louis display as well. He's probably playing better than uh, St. Louis' running game. Uh, well, we don't have his stats. Hand off again to Mac, trying to follow his blockers, gets hung up there at about the 14. It's going to be a third and short coming up. St. Louis burns through their final timeout. Uh, I also just want to give credit to the coaches, to the defensive coordinators as well. They have schemed this running game so well that, you know, whatever St. Louis threw at them, uh, they just can't they just can't stop them. Um, I'm going to look up some stats while you call this game. The third and four from the 14. Mack going to get another handoff. And St. Louis will stop them. And there's some stats right there for Todd Mack. He's already got 62 yards rushing. Wow. Hey, Eric, 
did you know that before this game, St. Louis is the number one in rushing defense, only allowing 41 yards wow. rushing yards per game. Wow. No, I did not know that. So, yes, incredible coaching. Just made this incredible scheme that outmatched, outplayed St. Louis at every turn, every corner. Now Ricky Matthews trying to hang up a 60 burger on the St. Louis Gladiators, which he does from 29 yards. 62 to 3 is your score. As we get a look at the instant replay, not that we really need to, but another good kick by Ricky Matthews here today. Yeah, that's right. He is he is a consistent uh I guess unsung hero, another unsung hero. He just has uh, scored how many times has he had field goal because AJ Castle might have had a majority of those points but without the kicker well he's he said two field goals and eight extra points today so basic math tells me that's 14 <laughs> points and that's more than AJ Caswell has put up on the board today <laughs> that's right 14 points equivalent to two touchdowns incredible actually Listen. I take that back AJ Caswell did have that rushing touchdown so he but 14 that's points. One, uh, <laughs> that's right. 14 points. Wow. Everyone hey, contributing. Everyone. Every single every single piece, you know, just meshing together like cogs in a well-oiled machine. A seal with a pump fake. Finds a man over on the right-hand side. That was a good throw there. That was a good one. Yeah, indeed. Dylan hurrying the troops to the line here. He's probably going to spike the ball, judging by the formation. No timeouts for the Gladiators as they spike the ball and clock it at 41 seconds. And to give you an update, Vancouver is wrapping up their victory over at Canada Field, although it looks like they're going to be punting. So Denver still with a chance to tie this ball game up at 17-10 to over in British Columbia. And again, the official live scoring app of the SFL is ScoreStream, so download that for free from the uh, Apple and Android stores. That is going to be an incomplete pass looking for Nick Finch. It's going to be third and ten coming up with 37 seconds left to play. Well, the booth is going to take a look now. Oh, uh-oh. Interesting. Everyone is just against St. Louis. Well, oh, maybe, wait, no, this one would be I was forcing. about to say, maybe this one, they won't be against St. Louis. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, yeah, he definitely got his foot in bounds. Yeah. So they'll, they'll call that a catch for sure. It's uh, a little bit of silver lining for St. Louis. At least they know that there's going to be someone behind their back. It's the booth. But it's still, you know, they, I, want, I, want, I want to see them make a, one touchdown. Make it a 10-62 game. Because boy, oh boy, they have been shut out this game so hard. Only one field goal. Uh. It's, it's been super tough for these guys today. I, you know, this this certainly wasn't an easy game for St. Louis. And, and you know, hats yeah. off to them for showing a ton of effort. And uh, as, as Seal throws it down the sideline there, he's got Tito Moss who tight ropes the sideline. And he gets it out to the 35 before he's marked out of bounds. You said effort, good effort on this one. Picking up, I think that was 15-ish yards uh, on this play. And these are these are the types of plays that have been working for Dylan. You know, the short pass versus the long pass, and it's the long pass really where the Queen City Corsairs were able to capitalize on. Great defensive play by Queen City, St. Louis. <clears throat> A little unfortunate that. They have probably, their playbooks have probably been read already by Queen City beforehand. A seal off his back foot, still able to complete the pass. Wow. Gutsy play by the quarterback there as Scott gets his his uh, his catch there. 20 seconds left to go. A seal's just going to bring the troops to the line, going no huddle. 15 seconds to go. Takes the snap, throws it over to the right. He's got Tito Moss, oh. and Tito Moss gets dragged out of bounds. And it'll be 10 seconds left to go for the Gladiators. 21 yards in 10 seconds. I wonder if they're going to go for a field goal on this one. Q 
Getting into opponent territory has been rare for them today. And Vancouver wraps up their victory over at Canada Field today, 17 to 10. So a good victory for Andy Hamilton and company. As a seal throws it out to Moore, wow. he gets knocked out of bounds. Six seconds left to go now. Yeah, a little bit of fire burning, burning underneath St. Louis, you know. They're hungry for that one touchdown. Just one touchdown. Well, and again, they're, they're showing good heart. They're showing good efforts, you know. Definitely hats off to the Gladiators for, you know, trying to uh, save face here. As uh, this yes. certainly hasn't been one of their best games. Indeed. Yeah. Hats off, indeed, to effort shown. Uh, it takes guts to face the Queen City. This kind of team. Oh! No, oh, look at Fortito Moss again. Couldn't thread the needle, though, as Nacho Sicario was in there on the play. So two seconds left to go. We'll probably have enough time for one final play. See if St. Louis can punch it in the end zone. So here's the ball game, third and three, two seconds left to go. A seal, play action. Duffy coming for him, gets it off to Moore. Moore get the first down, and he'll get knocked out of bounds inside the five. A dominating performance today from the Queen City Corsairs as they notch a 62-3 win as we get, take you into the 2K Sports postgame show. And just absolutely, ah. that's exactly what we were thinking. Just a dominating performance on all sides of the ball by the Corsairs. Incredible. 361 rushing. All, all, well, mostly from AJ Cash. Ash Odom putting up, a, putting up a big game, 62 3. This is the kind of game that, the kind of performance that you want to see for him all throughout the season, all the way to the playoffs. And yeah, I'm looking forward to what Green City has in store to go up against the other big teams as well. Well, this this was uh, not quite as close a game as we were hoping for there, Mark. No, but um, yes, it was a good showing of Queen City's strength and, and a good lesson as well for St. Louis and Glenn, a St. Louis uh, team to learn what are the things that they can improve on definitely a little bit, probably on grid, decision making, beating the defense. Overall, good game. And as we take a look at the stats and highlights here, uh, look to next week. Queen City travels to the Ninth Circle, Indianapolis, to face off against the Red Devils. And St. Louis will have a tough contest against the Denver Nightwings, who will look for uh, to avenge th this week's loss against the Vancouver Legion as they host the Gladiators at Richard L. Snowden Stadium. Any final thoughts before we send the people home here, Mark? Not much. Just that. I'll let you guys know. Have a good night. Sleep tight. We'll see you guys again next week. Well, and definitely want to stick around, guys. We do have a game coming up on Twitch tonight. Uh, Chris Curtis and Ramos Lynn will be on the call. And we will have San Francisco visiting Alaska. That should be an interesting game to watch, so be sure to stay tuned. That will be on Twitch. We will need your viewership, so please stay tuned for that. Uh, that is coming up at 7.30 Eastern, 8.30 Central, so just stay tuned for that. My name is Eric Vincent as we get a look at the 2K Sports Spygo Player of the Game. Ash Odom, would it be anybody else? Almost hanging up 300 yards rushing, four touchdowns, 8.2 yards to play. My name is Eric Vincent alongside Mark Lopez and Harish Prasad on stats. I want to thank you guys for coming out to Buffalo, New York today. Good night, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.